Do you like my new background? <laughs> I know I've had a new background in every single one of the videos I've posted, but um, this, this is going to be the winner and will allow me to make videos more consistently now that I have this hurdle out of the way. So I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments down below. What's up, you guys? My name is Sarah. I am the astrologer behind Seven Moons Astrology, and today I wanted to talk about a very exciting, ancient astrological technique that I don't see enough people talking about, and that is the Lot of Fortune. Sometimes you'll hear it called the Part of Fortune or Pars Fortuna. This is an ancient, ancient practice that is actually not a planet in the sky. It's a calculation based on the degree of your sun, moon, and ascendant at the time of your birth. And what it does and what it's used for is actually for predicting the area in your chart where you can draw in the most material wealth, money, um, earthly support in this realm. Um, so it's, it's good luck and good fortune in the sense that this is how you will find yourself drawing in um, the most wealth, so to speak. And it's not to mean necessarily millions of dollars and how you define wealth and abundance um, can look a little different depending on where it is in your chart. So I wanted to take us through today what that will mean um, in the sun, or I'm sorry, in the sign and the house that you have it in your chart. And so you might not know where your lot of fortune is. So first I thought we'd start with a mini tutorial of how you can find this using astro.com for free. And then I will put the link for you to uh, skip past this tutorial if you already know where your lot of fortune is, and then you can go straight to the interpretation that we'll do. Um, but if you want to know how to find out what your lot of fortune is and where it is in your chart, stick with me because what we're going to do now is I am going to show you how to find it. So um, I suggest you use astro.com for something like this. It's truly, in my opinion, the best free resource there is for all sorts of charts and uh, resources and information that you could possibly want um, for astrology in a way that is um, actually valid and backed up by real astrologers and lots of research. So you're gonna first start by going to free horoscopes, horoscope drawings and data, and then click extended chart selection. And so you will need to know your birth information if you'd like to do this. So you'd first click add a new person and you would put in all your data there and click continue. But since I've already done that, this is the field where you'll see the standard settings for your chart. And what I would recommend you do if you really want to take a look at this the right way is use whole sign houses. So um, it's, you know, there's lots of different reasons for using different house systems, but whole sign houses is what was used back in ancient Hellenistic astrology. So this is what I would recommend you use for a tech technique like this. It will give you the most accurate interpretation. Lots of people like to use Placidus, but you know, this, this is not an equal house system. It's a quadrant house system. And so I'd really recommend that you use something like whole sign houses for this. So that's what I'll be showing you. Um, you'll just want to make sure that you've got your name there, all of these things. You want to do natal chart wheel. That should probably be the default. But if it's not, select natal chart wheel. You can ignore this. Uh, this doesn't matter unless you want to look at the transits, but it should be showing by default um, today's date. Uh, use the tropical zodiac, geocentric. Those things should also be default. So um, you can skip past this, not as important because we're really just looking at the positions at the time of birth. And you'll wanna scroll down to additional objects. Here's where you'll see Pars Fortuna. So you just highlight that by clicking it. Click here to show the chart. So if you haven't seen this before, it will be your personal natal chart at the time and position of birth. So this is mine that you're looking at here. The part of fortune or lot of fortune is represented by this sort of like railroad crossing symbol here. And you can see that mine is in the second house represented by the two here and cancer, the sign of cancer. So once you've done that and you've determined what sign you have your lot of fortune in as well as what house you have, then we'll talk about how you would interpret those things. So, um, how we're going to do this is I'm going to go over each sign and each house. 
but it's unlikely that you're going to have your lot of far fortune in the sign and the house of the native zodiac, meaning Aries is tied to the first house. Well, most people aren't going to have their lot of fortune in the first house of Aries. If you do, what I'm about to tell you will be a very explicit interpretation. But if not, if you're more like me or probably the majority of people watching this video, you're going to have your lot of fortune in, for instance, Cancer. And Cancer normally represents the fourth house, but I've got my lot of fortune in the second house. So you'll want to listen to both your house and your sign. And I will give the keywords and descriptions for each of those things. And you'll sort of blend them together to create a holistic interpretation of what this would look like for you. Okay. Hope that makes sense. We are going to start with Aries and the first house though. So the first house, if you've got a lot of fortune in the first house, the first house represents who you are, your perspective on the world, the physical body, what you look like, how you come off to other people and how you were raised to be. So someone with a lot of fortune in the first house is typically someone who is concerned with appearances. They like to look their best and they're typically pretty attractive as well and they, they value showing up as someone who is put together. When you've got the lot here in the first house, the goal over this lifetime in order to open up, up the most financial resources to you is to learn how to express your own will, your own independence, and to exist on your own, making your own choices, following your own path. So this is typically really all about independence. And you know, that's what Aries represents after all too. So no matter where your lot is, if the sign that it's placed in is Aries, the way in which you're going to find that this money comes to you is when you are taking action. So in order to tap into the luck and good fortune of this placement, it requires you to take the initiative. This might be someone who has to really drive and stand out and dominate and lead. And when they do so, the financial doors will open for them. So, you know, this is a person who will probably find most gain when they're acting in self-interest, maybe a little bit selfishly. And they might typically notice that when it comes to money matters, there's like this sense of urgency that builds. That's that Aries energy. And it's really focused on driving to achieve. So someone with an Aries placement for the lot of fortune is, might be likely to feel a bit of frustration and anger that eventually results in moolah. So that's what it'll look like for both Aries and the first house. Moving on to Taurus and the second house. The second house represents finances, literally, in the zodiac. So this is how you make money. It's not money from the outside. It's what you do to draw income in. So it's your job if you work a standard, regular job. This is the actions you're taking, the work you're put, putting in, the career that you have to create income. You'll do quite well in this area, particularly when you tap into the sign energy of your lot placement. So Taurus being, you know, corresponding to the second house in the native zodiac, this is someone who will see their wealth build when they are methodical, when they are patient, and then when they stick to their well thought out plan. Taurus is someone who likes to stay in the comfort zone. And when they're in their comfort zone, that's where they do their most detailed thorough work. And they can be very reliable when they understand their landscape. So if you've got your lot in the first house, for instance, and the sign is Taurus, you would combine the energy of you, your appearance, the way that you look, your outlook on the world, the decisions that you make, your own will, with patience, being steadfast, being thorough, being methodical. And it's probably the case that if you have a second house placement, your career is going to blend that energy. Moving on to Gemini. So Gemini in the native zodiac has to do with the third house. And the third house is all about learning and connecting with our community. So this is the house of siblings. This is the house of neighbors. This is the house of family, friends, and extended relatives. You might be someone who um, 
has connections with a family member that's very well off or one of your siblings makes it big later in life. That would be a lot placement in the third house, for instance. Or what you learn or media projects that you share online, maybe through a website, video production, writing, uh, short form writing in particular, or you start a blog. Those are all third house themes for a lot placement. Gemini is someone who's got a fast moving mind and it relies on you communicating. So if your lot is in the third, or I'm sorry, if your lot's in Gemini, then you need to prioritize your skill with communicating, sharing ideas, learning and connecting with other people. And that fast mind and ability to absorb and take in all sorts of information and be very curious and learning all about different kinds of topics these are this is kind of like a jack of all trade energies so the little bit that you know about everything for being curious is what's going to open the financial doors for you then when you move on to cancer in the fourth house the fourth house is the home, the family, the property, as well as the ancestral trauma. So this can look like all sorts of things. This could mean that you're, you're born into a really wealthy family. It could also mean that you were born into a family that is really sound and very healed and doesn't have um, a lot of trauma that they're imparting onto you, which gives you a leg up in life to sort of actually really believe in yourself and not have too many issues internally that block you from... Uh, creating the abundance in your life that you're meant to create. This could also look very much so on the material plane, like you have a large property portfolio. And if you're 15 listening to me right now, maybe that's something that you want to think about for when you're in your 30s, right? Someone who has amassed a lot of property, uh, maybe they've got passive income rolling in from the investments that they've made. Or maybe your wealth is simply just in your home because your home feels like your kingdom. It's very nurturing. It's beautiful. You take pride in the state of your home and you take care of your home and therefore it takes care of you. Maybe you have great wealth just within a warm, nurturing family as well. And we all know how rare that is today. So that would be, you know, good luck and good fortune with a fourth house placement. Cancer. That energy, of course, is associated with these fourth house, the fourth house themes, but we also want to fold in that this is truly about nurturing people. This is the cyclical nature of the moon, where the energy is up for two weeks and then it's down for two weeks, and you take care of people when your energy is high and then you retreat into your heart to nurture yourself. This is the energy of counseling, of coaching, of nurturing and mothering so maybe you work with children or maybe you are someone who is a coach or a psychologist these are all very cancerian types of energies and can help you get a little bit closer to where your lot is in life okay so moving on to leo in the fifth house the fifth house in the native zodiac represents the areas of passion and play and fun, the things that you do simply because you enjoy them. And it also is the house of romance and children. So with a fifth house lot play placement, you might find that your children, if you have them, go on to be extremely successful and then that benefits you down the road when they are able to take care of you. Or perhaps you have um, partners over and over and again in your life, romantic partners, you seem to attract partners that have um, more of a breadwinner status than you do. They make more money than you do. That's where, you know, the wealth and material support can come from. This could also mean that, you know, in the instance that maybe you got married and divorced, that's really more of a seventh house theme, but, you know, that romantic energy is embodied in the fifth house as well, that you know, if that wasn't your true partner and there was a split and then you get a payout, sometimes it's not always a positive circumstance, but it is the area that leads to that material wealth coming in, right? So that could also be a fifth house lot activity. Other than that, this is really um, you tapping into your creative pursuits, exercising your creative will, making creative decisions. It's not just pottery and painting, but also running your own business is a fifth house topic. So these sorts of things can indicate where you are going to find your lot in life. If you have Leo as the sign placement of your 
lot, then you would also consider that the way that this is going to happen is going to embody that Leo energy of pride and being the center of attention and a natural born leader who shines confidence and is very generous, has a huge warm heart, a leader and a giver at the same time. That's how to embody and access that lot fortune when you have a Leo placement there. <clears throat> So moving on to Virgo, Virgo is <clears throat> an interesting one because it's associated with the sixth house and sixth house is really all about health as wealth. The sixth house is our health routines, our fitness routines, our general physical and mental well-being. It's also the house of our coworkers and our day-to-day -day activities and the projects that we do and um, the people that report to us and the way that we connect with our colleagues and just people in our everyday life. So this is someone who, you know, their health is going to be, you know, that won't, it won't give them too much trouble over the course of their life. They'll be someone who's generally very healthy and that health is their wealth. They're going to have a lot of energy and vitality to be able to share in their day-to-day -day work. And so they'll be received well at work. Their projects will go smoothly. That will help them to advance in their career or be seen favorably by the people that they work with. And so that's a lot in the sixth house placement. Um, Virgo, Virgo on the other hand, that energy is all about the analytical mind, working through the details, Focus on focusing on being organized and orderly, and it's a bit of a perfectionist energy too. So if you have a lot of fortune in Virgo, it's that critical thinking and extremely logical, well thought out, detail oriented, um, orderly, organized energy that is going to help you access the wealth that your lot of fortune can bring. As long as you don't become too much of a perfectionist because that'll stop you from ever starting, right? So moving on to Libra, Libra represents the seventh house in the native zodiac. So if you have your lot of fortune placed in the seventh house, you will typically see that really what it is, is partnership that brings you the money. It's in complete opposition to Aries, right? It's on the exact opposite side of the zodiac from Aries. So where Aries is very self-oriented, self-interest, Libra in the seventh house is all about partnership working with other people, especially one-on-one, -on -one, and understanding that two minds is better than one. There is a balance to be held. It's not all about you, it's about other people as well. And the seventh house most traditionally represents the marriage partner. So what that could look like with a lot placement here is that you marry someone who is well-to-do. Or even if you get divorced, that person is supporting you with alimony or they made you know a ton of money and and that's where most of your financial support has come from that's what the seventh house could look like but it will also mean that you do well in business partnership especially when you're working closely with one-on-one -on -one with someone else it's it's the area of contracts and negotiations as well so those things will typically go well for for someone with the seventh house placement if you have the lot of fortune in Libra, you have to tap into that Libra energy, which is all about finding harmony among people, compromise, balance, justice, and fairness, making sure that your needs and the other person's needs are heard and accounted for, and that all options and scenarios are well played out, balanced, and considered holistically to find the most beauty and the most grace. Um, and this is also someone who, because Libra is associated with luxury and nice things and pleasure, you'll probably get to experience quite a bit of that in your life as well. Okay, and then we'll go on to Scorpio and the 8th house. So this one can be a bit tricky because the 8th house in the native zodiac rules um, some of the more hidden realms of life, like death and inheritance and core wounds and traumas, right? So this could be something where, you know, something unfortunate happens to you, but you get a lot of money because of it. You get a payout from it, an insurance payout. You get um, someone dies and you get a large inheritance. Um, that could be what the eighth house placement looks like as well. So it's pretty simply put, you know, it's related to um, money and financial support that comes from the outside. So good luck with mortgages, good luck uh, resolving debt, finding money coming to you from the outside, but it's not always a positive circumstance that will deliver it. When you have a Scorpio placement, 
which is associated with the eighth house, it's really that energy of extremes. It's that energy of oscillating from having nothing to having everything, right? So if you're, you know, you've got a Scorpio energy in there, what you'll have to rely on to get from the place of nothing to the place of everything, you know, the black and white um, sides of things with the Scorpio energy is to be a keen observer, a deep investigator, a researcher who gets down to the truth of everything. So when you embody that energy with a lot of for fortune placement here, you're most likely to draw in the resources that you need to support you. Sagittarius in the ninth house is a bit lighter, a bit more expansive. The ninth house is related to higher wisdom, higher philosophy. Um, it is obsessed with learning. It is obsessed with teaching. And it's also connected to foreign travel, foreign, foreign people, foreign culture. So with a lot of fortune placement here, you might find that um, you're able to take a lot of trips to faraway lands. Maybe you meet someone and develop a relationship with them from a foreign culture. Maybe your partner is someone from abroad that you met abroad. These people will typically live abroad for at least a portion of their lives. And um, it's also someone who goes on to um, maybe study religions, study philosophies, and then share those things. Teaching can be an avenue for people with a lot of fortune placement to draw in a lot of resources. Sagittarius embodies really a lot of the same things because of its association with the ninth house, but if you've got your lot of fortune in Sagittarius, what you'll want to remember is to embrace your ability to think big, right? So let's say that you have your lot of fortune in the fifth house, Sagittarius, you want to combine the fifth house themes of creativity and romance and play with Sagittarius, which is freedom and expansive thinking and considering what the higher purpose is to everything, um, adventure, embracing adventure and spontaneity, maybe letting go of the reins of responsibility a little bit to embrace what each moment is teaching you. That is a very Sagittarian theme. The expansion of consciousness is what that is all about. Moving on to Capricorn and the 10th house. So the 10th house is related to our public reputation, our relationship with authority, our career, and the legacy we leave behind after we're done working. So this is a fortunate placement because it's pretty obvious, right? If you have the Lord, Lord of, um, if you have the lot of fortune in the 10th house, what you're going to find is that you will have a very successful career that if if it doesn't yield fame, it at least leads to a great deal of notoriety and you will be known for what you're doing. You'll be known for what you're doing. This is a common energy for people who attract a lot of um, public success, public success related to the 10th house. Capricorn, on the other hand, this is the energy where you have to embody, again, patience like Taurus because uh, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and Saturn is the father of time. So... Um, it, it requires that you really get responsible. You'd be really responsible. You'd be very structured. You'll be focused on the rules and doing things the right way, not the fast or easy way. It's got to be about long-term foundations, stable success that grows over time. So um, if you have, for instance, the lot of fortune in your third house and you're going to start a blog, this is not someone who can expect that the money is going to open up instantly because if you have Capricorn in your third house, the, your writing projects are going to require a lot of work and commitment and time and uh, focused development uh, and patience to see those things through. But when they do finally mature and they, they reach that stage of maturation, they will be successful and lead to um, a state of authority because of the way that Capricorn is tied to the 10th house. It's just something that has to occur over time. Okay, so Aquarius in the 11th house. The 11th house is associated with our long-term goals and dreams and visions, as well as groups and our connections to organizations and our social circles, our wider social circles, the people that we know in our communities and networks, um, not just in life, but also in work. So if you have a lot of fortune placement in the 11th house, this is someone who will see um, that they get what they need, they get what they want, the goals that they have far off in the future, the dreams that they have, they're able to make those things happen as a result of um, the way that they connect with their network. They're very good at networking. They find their space well among other people. This is someone who is altruistic and will 
start an organization that leads to success or participate in an organization and um, receive rewards and accolades for the work that they do. And if you have an Aquarius house placement, what this will require is that you're really being a free thinker and outside of the box because Aquarius is something very unorthodox. Aquarius is the unexpected. And at the end of the day, although it takes its own path and can go a bit against the grain of what is normally expected of people, it is an energy that is motivated by doing the greater good by contributing in a way that supports the benefit of everyone. And so if you keep those things in focus and you remember that what makes you unique is what helps you to contribute to the success and well-being of everyone and wider groups uh, and you embrace your originality and what makes you different, that's going to help you unlock your lot of fortune placement in Aquarius. And then finally, we have Pisces in the 12th house. 12th house is another one of those hidden realms like the 8th house. It's about loss and endings. So this can be another one where, you know, what you lose or what ends, even if it's painful at the moment, um, can actually lead to new beginnings that steer you toward the path of success where you get the material support that you need. Um, this is also the house of rest and retreat um, and solitude. So this is someone whose best ideas are going to come to them when they're alone. This is someone who, when they take the time to rest or they go on vacation and they take a time out, they will um, find a lot of success and um, maybe really require that time and space to do so. The 12th house is also associated with what is kept away from modern society. So um, what you retreat from, things like hospitals or temples or museums, things that are like separated from um, the public in a way. And so you might be a doctor, right? Having a lot of fortune placement in the 12th house would mean that you know, if you spend a lot of time in hospitals and somehow this is what's leading to your material benefit, it could look like that quite literally, or it could be, um, you know, similar to a stage of your life ending in a way where, you know, something is completely different after the fact and your whole life flips upside down, but it gives you great access to new wealth and abundance. Maybe you lose someone similar to that eighth house theme. Um, Ultimately, though, Pisces is about the connection between us all. So Pisces is very compassionate. It's very empathic. It's a dreamer. It's someone who's going to definitely have um, sort of an ideal vision of how things will go. And whether or not that, that ideal vision is realistic, it's sort of that dreamy, um, best case scenario energy and that, that positivity and um, kind of fantasy land will tend to manifest for a person with Pisces. Where they will struggle is um, maybe with boundaries and understanding and confronting challenge and um, being their own person in the area of their lot placement. But when they learn how to tap into that, they'll see uh, that they're able to connect with people truly authentically and have great a great degree of passion and um, compassion for other people that unlocks everything for them. So that's what it might look like when you have it in Pisces. So um, I'll give you an example. I, I have the lot of fortune in uh, my second house and the second house is embodied by cancer. So I think I showed you that with my chart. I'll go ahead and pull it up again. So um, yeah, you can see that I've got that second house in cancer and the lot there at 23 degrees. So what I do for work and what I've done for work typically where it just keeps leading to success is always a very cancerian theme i have i started in college originally working um, as an admission counselor for the school so i was working with students and parents one-on-one -on -one. and remember i mentioned that cancer can be an energy of coaching and nurturing and helping people to get the support that they need to grow that's very much so a cancer energy and um, I've done all sorts of coaching after that I moved on to business consulting and so then I was sort of filling the same role working with clients one-on-one -on -one to help them get the support that they needed and then now I'm working as an astrologer where I do one-on-one -on -one readings all of the time I have a dream coaching program where I help people tap into their astrology to unlock their charts and realize their dreams and find a purpose-led mission based on their energy and so th these are all very cancerian themes but moreover than that I have never worried about money it's not to say that I have been 
um, in the best position financially my whole life, but money seems to flow to me. And that's a very common thing for a second house placement. Never worry about money and the money always comes right when you need it, maybe in the lick of time. That can be very much so what you would find with, um, you know, the uh, <laughs> second house placement in cancer. So it's a, it's a lucky one for sure. But um, yeah, if you, you want to tell me, go look on astro.com using that tutorial and tell me like what you've got as your lot of fortune placement. Leave it in the comments below. See if you can combine the sign and the house to make your own interpretation and an understanding of how that lot of fortune is playing out for you. And then if you would like to tap into your chart more and learn more about not just your lot of fortune placement, but all of your pl planets and asteroids uh, and see what energy uh, you have and how it's playing out in your life experience, I am open for readings and you can find me at the link below. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, and I will see you next time.